Well, in March, Israel enacted a law to bar entry or deport any political activists who promote or support the movement to boycott, divest from, or sanction this country known as BDS. One of the first people targeted under the law is Omar Shakir, who heads a local branch of the global NGO Human Rights Watch and was ordered originally to leave Israel by today. Now, the European Union issued a statement condemning that order, saying, quote, human rights defenders represent natural and indispensable allies in the promotion of human rights. The EU expects Israeli authorities to reverse the decision, as otherwise Israel would join a very short list of countries that have barred entry to or expelled Human Rights Watch staff. Shakir has since launched a legal challenge to his expulsion order, and yesterday the Jerusalem District Court temporarily halted his deportation while it reviewed his case. We're going to hear from him now. Joining us also for the conversation is Yona Schiffmiller, director of North America Desk at NGO Monitor. But first, let's go to Jerusalem, to Omar Shakir. Thank you very much for joining us. So uh, let's just first start with your legal challenge. Uh, what is the last you have heard from the court and what is your next step? Absolutely. So we filed a lawsuit last week to challenge the decision of the Israeli government to revoke Human Rights Watch's work permit and order me to leave the country. We challenged both the constitutionality of the law that was the basis for this decision, the amendment to the law of entry that bars entry to those who publicly call for boycotts of Israel, but we actually argue that the government went beyond the law in deporting somebody as opposed to denying entry to someone with valid legal status in the country who it acknowledged is not currently calling for boycotts. Um, and we also argue that we shouldn't fit under the law because neither Human Rights Watch nor I as its representative promote boycotts of Israel. So we've challenged that law. And the court uh, yesterday issued a temporary order, uh, an injunction, in fact, that allows me to remain in the country until the end of legal proceedings, until it has made a determination on the merits of our legal challenge. Omar, the government argues that you were part of an effort or an organization that attempted to bring criminal charges against senior Israeli officials, uh, military officials. How do you respond to that? Sure. Look, Human Rights Watch is an international rights group. We work on human rights abuses in over 90 countries across the world. We cover every country in the Middle East and North Africa. We've been working on Israel and Palestine for over three decades. We've done reports on Hamas, the PA, and on Israel. We have documented serious violations of international law that are part of Israel's occupation of the West Bank and Gaza Strip. And we have called on the International Criminal Court to open an impartial international um, uh, formal probe into to what's happening in the state, in the territory of Palestine. But um, ultimately, that's a part of our global work. We talk about a lack of accountability, impunity across the world. And this is part of our international work. And, you know, by taking this decision, Israel has joined a group of countries like Cuba, North Korea, and Iran who have blocked access to Human Rights Watch staff because they disagree with the content of our work. Yona, what's your take? Is it within the bounds of uh, democracy to expel, to deport somebody uh, who is doing that? sort of work inside Israel? Well, what I'll, what I'll say is that the representation of HRW's work in Israel and of Shakir's work in Israel is simply calling attention to human rights violations and not what they're in fact doing, uh, which is promoting boycotts, divestments, and sanctions, is completely incorrect and false. Uh, in the time that Mr. Shakir has been in Israel, both he and HRW have, on a number of occasions, called for specific sanctions um, and boycotts against uh, Israeli companies, particularly against the Israeli banking sector, as well as Israeli football clubs. So I think that that representation is completely misleading. Oh, well, Omar, uh, would you like to respond to that? Absolutely. Look, the Interior Ministry disagrees with what he said. The Interior Ministry itself has said that neither Human Rights Watch nor I as its representative promote boycotts of Israel. What we have found is that companies who operate in settlements inherently benefit from and contribute to serious violations of international law. And we've called for businesses to stop operating in settlements. That, however, is distinct from a call to boycott those companies, much less boycott Israel itself. We take no position on the BDS movement. We take no position on academic, cultural, sports, and other boycotts. We're simply calling on companies like we call on 
States to adhere to their international legal obligation in the same way we would tell a company that works um, in a garment factory not to use child labor. It's a matter of sticking to international legal obligations. And the Interior Ministry itself has said this isn't about BDS. Rather, they justified their decision by an intelligence dossier which lists my activities going back to when I was a student years ago. And this is just the newest allegation in a months-long oh campaign to muzzle Human Rights Watch. Well, that might be what the Interior Ministry said, but Israel's Foreign Ministry has also spoken out on the issue. And they say, I want to quote them, for some time now, this organization's public activities and reports have engaged in politics in the service of Palestinian propaganda while falsely raising the banner of human rights. What's your response to that? That decision um, was reversed. Sure, that, that decision was actually reversed. That was the basis in February of 2017 to deny a work permit for Human Rights Watch as an organization. But ultimately, they reversed that decision in giving me the work permit over a year ago. But the fact that you're pointing to that argument, which is about propaganda and not BDS, shows that this is not about either propaganda or about BDS. It's part of a campaign to silence Human Rights Watch. It's part of a trend across of Israel and pa Palestine where the space for human rights defenders is shrinking. I mean, think about what we're talking about here. We're we're talking about a state that proclaims to be a democracy, deporting someone because of their peaceful criticism of that state's policies, or even if you want political uh, advocacy. Okay. That's not what a democratic uh, well, let's, state okay, does. Let's, you make a good point. Uh, uh, Yona, why do you respond to that? Does this not fall within the be ra uh, boundaries of dissent in a democracy? Well, the, the idea that this is simply an attempt by the Israeli government to silence human rights work uh, is completely ridiculous. Um, this is about Mr. Shakir specifically. There are a whole host of NGOs that operate within Israel that are highly critical of the government, that are highly critical of Israeli activity in the West Bank, and no action is taken against them. This is specifically directed towards the BDS activities of Mr. Shakir and HRW. Uh, I would point Yana, out. I want to pause you there because this law is not specifically about Omar. Omar does happen to be the first one, I believe, within Israel to be to have this law applied to him. But this law applies to any of those that the Israeli government deems support BDS in their form of activism. The Israeli government, and we can agree or disagree about the merits of the law, whether or not it should have been enacted or not enacted, but the Israeli government, just like any other democratic government, has the prerogative to decide who it chooses to let into its country and who not, and particularly when we're talking about a work visa. Uh, Mr. Shakir, in particular, and HRW as an organization, doesn't get any preferential treatment when it comes to who uh, receives a work visa. Uh, that's not something that the Israeli uh, authorities are required uh, to, to hand out to anyone who's Simply asks for it, um, and in in this particular case, Mr. Shakir and HRW have continued their BDS activities during his stay here in Israel. Omar, briefly uh, responding to that point, the United States has barred people from for their political activities. We have seen countries in Europe, so uh, there are democracies that do do this. I mean, it's a political litmus test at the end of the day, and I think Israel's commitment to democratic values should not be consistent with this. But look, even when you cited the foreign ministry opinion earlier, they talked about propaganda for Palestinians. That's not BDS. The reality is it's not just Human Rights Watch. Israeli advocacy organizations have been accused of slander, of discrediting the army or the state. They face restrictive laws that make it more difficult for them to operate. Palestinian rights defenders face criminal charges, arrest, travel restrictions. There's a, and, and this is in addition to the fact that we're in year 51 of an occupation that is characterized by institutional discrimination, systematic rights abuse, and repression. Right, the Omar. general climate for respect for human rights and international law is in a poor place.